Hi, I'm Tom Kessler of Shearing Plow. I lead our global R&D team of scientists. I'll focus on finding new molecules and turning them into innovative medicines. We're excited to be sponsoring the Seed Salon because we believe these dialogues spark the thinking that can make great science happen. Music has attributes that you can objectify. I love music, I love science. Why would I want to mix the two? It's like an alchemist or a wizard. This person knows about things that they're not supposed to know about. Somehow we demand of musicians something different. How does somebody in this, or how does somebody in the sciences, where it's all about breaking things down into rational, um, analyzable chunks, how do you deal with something that's really hard to, or at least to somebody from, from my side, it seems to be really hard to do that. Well, it's hard because, um, you know, I, re I remember this quote from Alan Watts, the um, philosopher, uh, sticks in my head. Uh, his quote was that the problem with science is that when it wants to study the river, the scientist will go to the river with a bucket, take a bucket of water out, bring it to the shore, and sit there and study the bucket of water. Uh -huh. And of course, that's not river. Yeah. Right? And that, the problem with science is that if you're not careful, you lose the dynamic flowing nature of the phenomena that you're mm -hmm. trying to study. And, you know, a lot of people have tried to study music by, you know, getting rid of everything except pitch or everything except rhythm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or, you know, having these very strange artificial computer ger generated sounds and then seeing what the brain does in response to it. And I think, you know, just like the bucket isn't river, you know, rhythm is not music. It can be. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't composed to be just a rhythm, if you take somebody's song and you strip away all of the, the pitch and you're left with only the rhythm that they never intended to stand alone, then I think you're not studying it properly. Do you think things are changing that way? There's more of an acceptance of... There's always this tension in science that you want to control your variables mm -hmm. and you want to know what it is you're studying. Uh, and yet you want to have what we call, you know, we have a lot of jargon in, in our field. One of the jargon terms is ecological validity, which is just a fancy way to say it has to be like the real world. And mm -hmm. there's this tension between these two. And I've erred on the side of having the ecological validity in some cases in my own experiments because I want to see the real phenomena. Getting back to this other thing you were saying about language um, and you know, art versus language and, and why art can get at some of the things language can't, I think is where you were going with it. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to touch what we would call ir the irrational, emotional parts of ourselves. But as, a, as somebody who makes music, uh, and I think, yeah, you know this as well, that there's, there are kind of tried and true ways of doing that. Yeah. Um, sadly enough, there are tried and true kind of buttons that you can press that yeah. will get emotional responses. Yeah. Um, to some extent, it can be sort of objectified. People in intuitively, they feel that, okay, in, in a musical performance, uh, whether it's recorded or live, that the emotion is coming from the person and that that makes it authentic and true and real and, and, and therefore morally more upstanding and good. Whereas I would say, yeah, okay, a little bit, but music has attributes that you can objectify. As you just said, this kind of sound, this kind of rhythm, this kind of thing will generate this kind of emotion if it's done in, in, in any kind of half-assed manner, I think it's the craft that does whatever eighty percent of the emotional touching that yeah. touches another that touches another person. Um, the, the, let me jump to some other stuff. You now, there's the, the there's been these recent things about em empathy and oh, and mirror neurons. Yeah, mirror yeah. neurons. That just to me is just. I just thought, wow. The way they were first discovered is there was a laboratory in Italy 
that was doing some work with monkeys, and they were doing you know recordings from mm -hmm. uh, the brain of live monkeys. Um, you can do this. You can record from the brain. You can insert electrodes in it and record the responses of individual neurons. Turns out, ironically, the brain doesn't have any feeling. It doesn't, uh -huh. it's, it's not like poking your finger yeah. in, with, a, with a needle and, and it would hurt. You can poke in the brain and you don't feel anything. It doesn't have any sensory receptors, which is kind of ironic. Uh -huh. But um, they were recording from a cluster of neurons in the monkey brain and a monkey that they weren't studying at the moment, who was just sitting you know, aside waiting for his turn, um, watches another monkey reach for banana and then peel it and start to eat it. Mm -hmm. And then one of the technicians, a clever technician who was alert, noticed that the recording, the cell recordings from this monkey they're not studying, his, uh, his motor cortex starts going crazy. The part of his brain that would be active if he were actually reaching for something and peeling it back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they thought, well, this is a strange thing. Do we have our wires crossed? You know, we're measuring this mm -hmm. monkey's brain and not the, you know, they, they looked into all possible explanations. It turned out that, and they replicated it with a number of different things, and it turned out that um, they had discovered what are called now loosely mirror neurons, mirror neurons that mirror the activity of other people. And it's sort of the old monkey see, monkey it do. It means that when you watch a performance, a musical or sports or whatever, sports is very easy to see that yeah. people watch it and they, yeah, they're not only watching somebody else do it, in a kind of neurological way, they're experiencing that. Yeah, we find that. We find that um, if you watch somebody, uh, if you measure somebody's brain while they're watching, you know, somebody run around the bases, mm -hmm. um, the part of their brain that would be moving their feet is actually <laughs> active. And they're having to suppress that uh -huh. because they don't want to actually run. I'm so tired after watching that <laughs> ball game. Yeah. And uh, when you see a musician, if you're a musician yourself, especially. Oh, yeah. If you, you see a guitar, guitar player. <laughs> right. Air guitar, right? Yes. Saxophone, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And those are mirror neurons. And they seem to have played a very important role in the evolution of the species because we can learn by watching monkey see, monkey do, rather than having to actually figure it out step by step. In, yeah, and not, not only that, then you also feel what, to some extent, you empathize yeah. with what the other, not just yeah. the motor neurons, yeah. you feel what they're feeling, sort of. I think that's right. Um, well, I think ultimately, some aestheticians and philosophers would say that the goal of art is to get, is the artist wants to get you in the same mind set or heart set. As, as he or she was in when they created the work. They're trying to... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to create a mirror experience, a mirror emotional mm -hmm. experience. Stevie Wonder told me uh, that when, when we worked together uh, that uh, he wrote songs by putting himself in a particular emotional state and then when he recorded them he tried to get in the same emotional state and when he decided whether to include the song on the album when he listened back it had to create that same emotional state I would argue that that if the song is written well that it doesn't you don't have to begin the performance of the song in that emotional state uh, but by the time you get to the end of the song, yeah. your own song that you have written yeah. will, recall, will kind of whatever, regenerate yeah. Yeah. the emotions that, that you want to express in yourself. Now this, there and is so you end up with yeah. the, the feeling that you want, you want to express, but you don't have to have it going in.